Here we're going to be looking at a sale lease back here for a lease. Now that's where we have a lease transaction in which the owner of the property, the seller or the leasee in this case, sells the property or an asset and simultaneously leases it back from the new owner. So what the new owner does is they purchase, they purchase it here from the seller or the leasee and then they lease it back here to the seller or the leasee. And our example is going to be for where we sell a machine or the seller here sells this machine here for $85,142 dollars and they have lease payments that they're going to be paying on it for twenty thousand two hundred and fifty dollars per year five-year lease and in this case it's going to be a machine here that they're selling here and it's going to have a five-year life the machine and the uh, lease is going to have a nine and a half percent interest rate incorporated in it. So our amortization the schedule is set up here where we have $20,250 payments for five years and the payments are due at the beginning of each year and then this amortization here has a interest component which would be the financing costs or the interest payable or receivable here and then we have a principal uh, component here to this payment and that would be either a reduction here of the lease liability or the lease receivable. But what we want to look at here is this uh, selling price here of $85,140. Now that is the capitalized amount here of the lease and that's based on discounting this $20,250 payment back here the five years uh, discounting it back five payments for five years here back to its present value using a nine and a half percent interest rate and that present value here would be eighty five thousand one hundred and forty dollars so that's how our amortization our selling price is determined here by discounting those uh, payments back to twenty thousand two hundred and fifty dollar payments the five years nine and a half percent gives us this eighty five thousand one hundred and forty dollar selling price or the purchasing price however you look at it. Now let's look at the sale lease back here at the date of the contract here or the sales date and we'll look at it from the leasee's perspective. First we would debit cash here for $85,142. Now that's the cash received on the sale and that's the sales price of the lease contract here, $85,142. Next we have this machine here at its original cost here of $95,000 here. Now that is where we have the machine recorded on the books here at the time it was sold and leased back here. So it had an original cost of debited amount here of $95,000 and then accumulated depreciation on the machine here was credited for $35,000. So when we made this uh, sales lease back here, the machine was sold and then it was leased back. So we have to remove the machine here at its carrying value from the books and we have to record it as a lease here at its sales price. So what we would do is we would credit the machine here for $95,000 here and debit the accumulated depreciation here for $35,000 and that would remove the machine from the books here and then we would be recording this lease contract at its sales price here of $85,140. So we have the leased machine here uh, where it's leased back here we debit that here for $85,142. Now we have a lease liability as well here where it's a lease payable we would credit that here for $85,142 here. That's the contract sales price. Now the next thing, in this case we have a deferred gain that we have to calculate here. So the first thing we look at is our machine's carrying value here. So it has a cost of $95,000 less the accumulated depreciation of $35,000 gives us a book value or carrying value here of $60,000. Now we can cal calculate in this case it is a deferred gain. So the cash received was $85,142 less its carrying value here of $60,000 gives us $25,142. Now we would recognize that here as a deferred gain or unearned profit in this case. So we'd credit this deferred gain or unearned profit here for $25,142. Now let's look at recording the lease payments here on this sales lease back and we'll look at it from the lessee's perspective here. So first for our cash account here we would have that debited for 
$85,142. Now that was the cash received on the sales of that asset or that machine here and that was for our lease contract here. So we would credit that for the payments that we pay on that uh, lease here for $20,250 for each year. And now we have this leased machine here uh, and we would have that debited here for $85,142. Again that's based on our lease contract here the sales price of $85,142. Now we have to record depreciation against that uh, leased machine here and that was based on the $85,142 um, leased machine value here divided it by five years gives us $17,028 per year that we record depreciation on that leased machine and now we have to our deferred gain here our unearned profit here we would have that credited here for $25,142 so we take the um, $25,142 divided by five years here for the lease gives us $5,028 per year here uh, that we would be debiting our deferred gain and recognizing it here or crediting it as earned profit here. So uh, we had unearned profit here of $5,028 per year that we calculated and then we would recognize it as earned profit here or credit of that uh, for $5,028. Now the next thing is our lease liability here. We would have that credited here for $85,142. So we just go to our amortization schedule here and we look at the amount that our lease payable would re be reduced each period for that here. And then we also have this interest payable. We would have credited that or increased that for again off our amortization schedule for that interest portion here of the uh, uh, lease payment here and then we would be debiting it out here so the interest is accrued at, accrued at the end of the year and paid out at the beginning of the year with these lease payments here so uh, next thing we have uh, is this interest expense here on this lease machine we would we have our interest payable here and we would recognize that here as an interest expense each year and again that's just taking our interest payable and moving it over here to our interest expense and then the last thing we have here is the depreciation expense we would have debited that here uh, for that seventeen thousand twenty eight dollars that we calculated for the depreciation on that leased asset each year now let's look at this sales lease back here and we're going to be looking at it from the lessor's perspective here and we'll start with the date of contract or the sales date here so the first thing I would have the lesser would have done here is they would have credited their cash because they had paid $85,142 for the machine here. So the lesser purchases the machine from the lessee and immediately leases it back to the lessee. So they would have credited their cash here for $85,142 and then they would have recorded this machine here on their books here for as an asset here for $85,142 and then immediately uh, credit it out or remove it here from the books for $85,142. $142 and then debit or record a lease receivable on this machine here for $85,142. So the next thing here we have looking at recording the lease payments again from the lessor's perspective here. So they received a cash payment so that uh, would have would debit it here for twenty thousand two hundred and fifty dollars for each year here and then that cash payment is divided between the lease receivable and the interest receivable here so first the lease receivable was for eighty five thousand one hundred and forty two dollars and then we have lease recovery here that we recognize each year and that comes right off the amortization schedule here and next our interest receivable uh, off our amortization schedule we would have uh, debited that here uh, off the amortization schedule schedule and then credit it out here. Now the, in this case the interest was accrued at the end of the year and received at the beginning of the next year here with the lease payments. That's why we had the debit and the credit amounts. And then we would have recognized the interest revenue here from the interest receivable and credit that here for uh, the, the amount here of the interest receivable. And again that comes off the amortization schedule.